Ready to go, sir. Okay, great. I'd like to call to order the regular meeting of the Zionsville Redevelopment Commission for Monday, November 23rd, 2020 at 6.30. Uh, it's an electronic meeting via Zoom. Some meeting will be conducted pursuant to Governor Eric J. Holcomb's Executive Orders 20-02, 20-04, 20-08, and 20-27. And Governor Holcomb's exercise of his powers under Indiana's Emergency Management and Disaster Law, Indiana Code 10-14-3. Additional information regarding the meeting is provided in the annex published with this agenda. So thank you, welcome. Um, Roger, do we have any attendees that should be noted? If the attendees, if they would like to be recognized for the uh, record, if you could please raise your hand. We do have Sally Zalonis, Jeffrey Barfield, TJ G, thank you very much. Okay. And John Towsley, yes, thank you. Great, thank you, Roger. Uh, Wayne, if you could give us an uh, update on the reports. Certainly. Your 106 in Bennett project actually is finaled out, actually had a temp CO issued uh, late last, I think it was Monday or late last week. Uh, so that project is moving forward. Uh, AES Restaurants continues to work with the town uh, related to its pursuit of its project on Bennett Parkway. Uh, the Zines Olympical Office Building as well is working through finalizing its efforts on Bennett Parkway. Aria Apartments looks to, is wrapping things up as well with their, their project. Uh, Blackacre Brewing, have not had an update from them, need to reach out uh, at 98 South Main to see how things are going. And Hotel Tango has moving their project forward, certainly anticipates uh, being open uh, prior to the end of the year, I'm not here to state exactly when that is, but I know that they're getting very close. Uh, certainly water is live, sewer grease trap is in, so that project's moving along very well. Uh, the Trico edition uh, is moving forward uh, ribbon cutting with their project, specifically to Appaloosa Crossing. Uh, various efforts are underway at, at that property with earth movement. Uh, different lots have certain entitlements in place, so we're looking forward uh, to seeing what that project can bring in 2021. Brickside Corporate Park uh, with the Redevelopment Commission and the, and the Community Development Corporation, uh, certainly working through purchase letters agreements we can discuss a little bit further tonight uh, status of the Ray Hall project other items on the on the radar we've wrapped up the project with Christopher Burke related to stormwater mitigation uh, related to the permitting and Creekside with the CDC they've been very busy as you know uh, considering grants for discussion and certainly looking for uh, finalizing the project uh, uh, contracts for 21 uh, related to snow removal and mowing that's all that I have happy to take questions great thank you the only comment I would have is, and, and I had made a note, uh, so we have a potential ribbon cutting for Trico. Uh, Actually, Trico as well as Triphase, uh, both projects are completed and, and working towards those. I believe they're both working with the Chamber of Commerce uh, to get those on, on a schedule, and certainly we're happy to share those dates as they're known. Great. If you could do that, that'd be wonderful. Thank you. All right. Um, approval of approval and adoption of minutes from October 26, 2020. I had one comment on 6B. I believe it should be Mr. DeLong informed the RDC that the available funds for the grant program is growing thin instead of he, I think it's just a typo. We'll get that done. Correction and move to accept the minutes. Motion, do we have a second? I will second. This is Kate. Thank you. Uh, Roger, could you conduct a roll call please? Yes, Ms. Madrick. Sorry, you're muted. 
I've got dogs around, so I muted. Sorry. Uh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Ms. Swanson? Yes. Ms. Hiddle? Yes. Ms. Rottel? Yes. Thank you all. Motion carries. Next on our agenda, we have a presentation for the annual taxing unit. Um, and I didn't know if Tim or Becca, which one of you were going to lead that uh, PowerPoint will, presentation? I'll actually take that one. Um, so good evening, commissioners. I'm Becca Zakowski with uh, Crow, and I also have Tim Barry on the line, and we'll be going over the annual TIF presentation. I will share my screen. Are you able to see the presentation? Yep. Yes. Great. Um, so let's go over the um, agenda. Uh, so first we'll go over the purpose of this presentation and then jump into an overview of the allocation areas, budgets and the 2021 budget and any future projects in the allocation areas. And then we'll um, go over the impact to the overlapping taxing units. And then I'll finally, um, Wayne will go over some highlights of the allocation areas. So the purpose of the presentation, to give a little background, on an annual basis, each redevelopment commission that has created any allocation areas must make a presentation at one of its meetings and the presentation is required to cover general information with respect to each allocation area. Uh, the general information must include the redevelopment commission's budget for tax increment revenues generated by the allocation area, uh, the long-term plans for the allocation areas and the impact of the allocation area on each taxing unit. So the purpose of this presentation is really to cover those requirements that are set out in Indiana code. I thought it'd be helpful before jumping into the budgets and long-term plans to go over, um, provide an overview of all the allocation areas. Um, so I won't read the dates under each of the allocation areas, but this slide really gives you information about uh, when it was established by the declaratory resolution, the uh, base assessment date for each of the allocation areas and when they expire. The Zionsville EDA was the original EDA and allocation area that was established by the Zionsville RDC. Uh, there was an amendment in 2015 that uh, removed some parcels and created the Creekside allocation area. Um, the next allocation area that was established by the RDC was the Oak Street allocation area. Uh, there currently are no obligations outstanding that are payable from these TIF revenues. So uh, the expiration date for that uh, allocation area will be 25 years from the first uh, pledge. The um, 334-700 allocation area was actually assumed uh, through, uh, the RDC actually assumed jurisdiction over this EDA through annexation between the town and Whitestown. Um, similar to Oak Street, there's no obligations outstanding. So the expiration date um, is still uncertain. It'll be 25 years from when TIF revenues are pledged from this area. The Creekside allocation area, as I mentioned, this is actually um, within the Zionsville EDA and was created in 2015 through an amendment to the original allocation area. The um, Creekside area will expire um, 25 years from the date of creation because the uh, TIF revenues were actually pledged to all the outstanding obligations that uh, were outstanding uh, and payable from the original Zionsville allocation area. Uh, the Metro FiberNet allocation area is um, will expire 25 years from the date of the 2017 Metro FiberNet uh, TIF bonds, and those are payable from the Metro FiberNet allocation area um, through the designated taxpayer, and that is for purposes of creating um, 
are capturing personal property AV in the TIF. The 146th Street allocation area, again, no obligations outstanding, will expire 25 years from the date of the first pledge. Holiday Farms is the most recently established allocation area, also does not have any outstanding obligations. Um, the next two slides uh, show historical net assessed value for the allocation areas that generate incremental AV. So as a refresher, after an allocation area is established, all of the assessed value in the area as of the base assessment date from on the previous slide, plus property assessed as residential, generates property taxes for various taxing units located in the area, while subsequent increases in assessed value due to new investment in the area are temporarily captured and set aside into a TIF allocation fund. So these graphs really show you the base AV in blue that those taxes will get um, pushed through to the overlapping units. And then the yellow increment AV is what actually gets captured in the TIF. The next slide just shows the three other um, allocation areas that generate incremental AV. The um, 146th Street and Holiday Farms area did not generate any incremental AV in the payers that we show here. So all of their AV is currently in the base and getting passed through uh, to the taxing units. Um, this slide goes over the uh, TIF revenues that were or were going to be collected in each of the allocation areas um, that are generating incremental assessed value. So approximately uh, $2.3 million will be collected in the allocation areas in 2020. Uh, the next two slides go over the outstanding obligations that have a TIF pledge to payment on the principal and interest of the obligation. The sewage works uh, bonds of 2010 are payable from net revenues of the sewage works and the TIF revenues from the original Zionsville allocation area. Those will expire in, I'm sorry, will um, mature in 2029. The 2012 bonds are payable from TIF revenues of the original Zionsville allocation area as well. And that bond funded the Bennett Parkway improvements and those will mature in five years. Uh, the lease rental revenue bonds of uh, uh, series 2016 actually have a formal pledge of a special benefits tax, but that tax is not levied. Um, debt service is actually being paid by the available Creekside TIF revenues, and any shortfall is made up uh, by the original Zionsville um, allocation area. And those bonds obviously funded the Creekside Corporate Park um, improvements. The uh, 2016 town hall note payments are uh, subject to annual appropriation. Uh, in the past, We've used Oak Street TIF revenue first to make those payments and then CCD, food and beverage, and a contribution from uh, Boone County and lit revenues are used to make the short, uh, make up the shortfall between the debt service payment and the Oak Street TIF revenues that are available. The Metro FiberNet bonds are uh, funded by the Metro FiberNet project. Um, the TIF revenues are generated by the personal property investment that Metro FiberNet has put in, um, and those were actually purchased by the developer. The uh, refunding bonds of 2017 refunded the 2008 bonds that were originally issued to finance the acquisition of land and construction of 106th Street. Um, these are payable by uh, TIF revenues collected in the Zionsville, the original Zionsville allocation area. Um, and then from here, I will hand it to Wayne to cover the next few slides uh, to talk about the 2021 budget and some future projects for the allocation areas. Thank you. Yes, on the screen is your 2021 budget as prepared by the town's chief financial officer, Tammy Havard. Uh, certainly, this is a rep reflective and representative, and certainly Crow assisted as well uh, with the pre preparation of this document. This is representative of the different bond payments and different action items that are uh, on your radar, uh, certainly maintenance-wise, uh, for the town to move through this, this debt service. 
future projects. These three in bold items are, are generalizations of the very specific uh, tax increment finance districts that were mentioned by Rebecca with the Zinesville uh, original EDA, uh, the action items that this group has seen will be con the continuation of support of the business uh, retention efforts, as well as uh, enhancing and recruiting efforts. Uh, certainly, it's anticipated that there will be some action items that come out of the Zinesville Gateway Area Study. This is a project, of course, that this group has uh, provided a, a, some financial assistance to the study at around $11,000 or so. Certainly staff is not here tonight to say what these recommendations will be. This is the, the item the consultant is, is working through, uh, but we can only anticipate that there'll be some action items related to public infrastructure or any, uh, any other types of enhancements. And certainly your, your organization will be uh, well suited to assist in that conversation. Certainly reflecting back on the intersection feasibility study that was done in March of 2019 uh, for the first street extension. Uh, certainly this is a possibility as, as far as this project uh, living on uh, as a result of the efforts of the Zionville Gateway study. Uh, again, staff's not here to say this is will happen, but certainly uh, it's something we want to you know, discuss and put on the radar nonetheless. Certainly me mentioning Michigan Road Corridor that touches on both the Holiday Farms and the Appaloosa Crossing TIF. Those projects, while no TIF increment is, is leveraged currently, we do anticipate based upon the original uh, TIF setup that public infrastructure projects would uh, come to fruition in those areas on the, on the near term. Uh, same with County Road 700 East, that TIF out uh, towards Whitestown, again, where it was discussion of public and infrastructure improvements being on the radar with those particular projects. Town Hall TIF, certainly that project as, as referenced, it's a very minor increment that's generated and certainly that that is uh, leveraged against the debt uh, specific to the to the payment on the on the town hall infrastructure, Metronet, a bond that was specific to Metronet, and Metronet paid the legal fees to set that up. So that's a, a project that where the RDC did not incur uh, specific expenses. I believe I've covered all of the TIFs. The one, of course, I didn't mention was Creekside, where you're very busy uh, with uh, setting up and providing for uh, lot sales and certainly support of infrastructure, utility uh, working through uh, different. Uh, expansions of utilities if they if those would be necessary. Thanks, Wayne. Um, so next, the final requirement is the impact discussion. Um, so I wanted to start off by showing uh, the applicable tax rates for each TIF uh, district, which is just equal to the taxing district less the um, school corporation's referendum tax rate. Uh, which TIF districts are just not entitled to that tax rate. So those tax dollars flow to the school and not to the TIF. Uh, the allocation areas are all within either 006 Zionsville Corporation, 005 Eagle Zionsville Rural District, or the Eagle Zionsville Urban District. Um, and the tax units that make up those three districts are the county, the town, the school corporation, the um, Hussey Mayfield Memorial Library and the Boone County Solid Waste Management District. Um, so this slide kind of hits on some quick bullet point impacts of TIF, but in order to create a TIF allocation area, a specific finding of fact is required um, that the adoption of the allocation provision will result in new property taxes in the area um, that would not have been generated but for the adoption of the alloc allocation provision. So TIF allocation areas really stimulate new development. And new development um, in the allocation area will enhance property taxes and generate new jobs. And new jobs will provide new local income tax. And while the TIF areas, um, when the TIF areas expire, the all of the any NAV, including the base and the increment that has been generated because of the new development, will be passed back to the overlapping taxing districts when they expire. Over the past five years, approximately $10.4 million has been captured in TIF revenues to fund projects that um, I think Wayne will highlight on the next slide. Wayne, if you want to highlight some of the projects that have been accomplished because of TIF. 
Certainly. And the list is is broad. And certainly these images that are on your screen are, are just a representation of a few of the projects that this, this group has touched. But certainly Hotel Tango, Triphase, Alt Construction, and the, certainly the grants that you've considered this year in terms of, of COVID are certainly some quick highlights of, of action items that you've undertaken. Backing this a few steps up, certainly incentive processes related to South Village on both sides of South Main Street were, were projects you were involved in, uh, even going as far back as a little better, we're mentioning 2012-13. Uh, uh, thinking of uh, your, the Bennett Parkway project, so certainly a little bit farther back, but this group has a, a strong history of, of certainly you know participating in support, um, going back to the original uh, last effort with the rebricking of, of Main Street. But the images on your on your screen here are more actionable items of, of current days. Uh, certainly, the entirety of Creekside, certainly near probably seven point eight million dollars worth of of uh, cash to facilitate that overall project between the land purchase, uh, the different development uh, schemes that we've worked through. Certainly the bridge over Eagle Creek, the, the upgrading of Zinesville Road are, is a project that primarily was led by the Boone RDC, but your organization did participate to about a quarter of a million dollars uh, in this effort. So certainly that was actually something we worked uh, with uh, previous president to facilitate and again an, an image of, of Creekside itself with its with its signage and uh, and herringbone uh, brick pattern but again conclusion uh, certainly a robust list of action items you've been involved with uh, over the years um, and that concludes the annual TIF presentation we did include I think you got an email copy of the presentation a just a TIF refresher in the, as an appendices um, that kind of provides more background and um, knowledge on just how TIFF works. So that is it for the annual presentation. Great. Thank you both Becca and Wayne for that presentation. Certainly I would, would also note for the record that uh, <laughs> units did receive uh, via uh, US mail uh, notice of this, of this uh, event. Um, probably mailed that out November 12th. I'm not aware of any representatives of, of taxing units that are that are in the audience, but certainly wanted to mention that uh, here on the record nonetheless. Great, thanks, Lynn. Next, we have uh, CDC recommends recommendations for grants, and uh, the first one is Salon G. Um, Roger, if you could invite them to. Join the main group. I would, Wayne, you're going to have to promote, re-promote me to co-host. Unfortunately, during the presentation, my internet failed. I was booted off briefly, so I'm now rejoining. But I will need, thank you. Promoting Melissa and Tim G from Salon G. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. Hi there. Good evening. Good evening. So, um, oh, I'm sorry. No, you're fine. So, Salon G uh, requested $20,000 from the CDC. Uh, the CDC's recommendation is for $10,000. It's primarily for development of a new website. And uh, I'll give the floor to Melissa and Tim to tell us a little bit about the shop and your need for this grant funding. Thank you. Well, th first of all, thank you for uh, the recommendation. It's very generous. And we just wanted to say thank you for that. Um, as far as the salon, I'm gonna hand it over to Melissa since she's the, the face of it and she's mm -hmm. much better at it than I am. So go ahead. Um, so we've been in the village for eight years. I've been, I've been doing hair for about 20. Um, we requested the, the monies to help redo our website. We've realized it's, it's been, it's been eight years. We haven't done anything with it. I'm behind the chair full time. Um, so we just, it got away from me. And then we've also, we're looking at some help for our social media presence as well. Um, we serve 
a ton of clients within Zionsville, but we even serve a pretty decent percentage that come from outside Zionsville. So to also bring more traffic into the town. And um, during COVID, we were shut down for nine weeks and pretty much realized more than ever that that's with people being home more, everybody's turning more to websites, social media. And that was when we really realized, okay, we need, we need to get a better presence here. Um, and that also helps cross promote between the rest of Zionsville as well. And, um, oh, what was the other, I lost my train of thought. Well, Sorry. I, think, I think the interesting, the, the interesting, um, one of the interesting stats that we can we came up with when we were doing this grant proposal was on a five week cycle that uh, the salon usually brings in between 450 to 500 <clears throat> clients into Zionsville and out of those 55% um, are within the village proper or within Zionsville proper and then 45% are from the surrounding areas. And that's when we kind of looked at this and we said what a great way that we can promote and bring so many people so that's about 202 people on a five week basis that are coming into Zionsville. And, uh, and our hope was that maybe with some social media um, that, you know, the kindness of the of Zionsville to help us out that, you know, we can cross promote as well, because we are in such a great location. Uh, you can't look out any of our windows and not see something that's going on in downtown Zionsville, be it the market, be it the Christmas tree. The parades um, I mean, it is, it is all things. one of the greatest things that our, our uh, customers have enjoyed with our location. Yes, and um, given when we were shut down for nine weeks and we missed out on uh, about $70,000 worth of services. So it definitely put a, pushed out a timeline of trying to redo this on our own. So we were asking for assistance to kind of help get that going. And especially now more than ever with everybody being home and using, using their computers and devices to find us. <laughs> is, is there Great. Any Thank you for that update. Yeah. Uh, does anyone from the RDC have any questions for Melissa or Tim? Hearing none, <laughs> take a vote for approval of the CDC's recommendation for $10,000 grant. Thank you. On G. Thank you. Thank you. So moved. A motion and a second. Do we have a second? I'll second, Kate. All right, great, thank you. We did. Roger, could we do a roll call, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Patel? Uh, yes. Ms. Hiddle? Yes. Ms. Madrick? Yes. Ms. Swanson? Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you very Thank much. You. I also just wanted to say I loved hearing the statistics about your clients and how many were coming from out of town. It was super interesting. So keep yeah, up the great it, work. No, that, yeah, we really enjoyed we, putting this together when we were doing this. And we, we just kind of stared at each other and said, this is amazing. Just, uh, you know, like I knew there were a lot, but I didn't realize it was that many. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I think it says a lot about just the quality of like services and also how great Zions was uh, yeah. at the same People time. People enjoy it. Great. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. Happy Thanksgiving. You as well. You too, Cindy. Stay safe. Great. Thank you. Um, next on our list is. Uh, CDC's recommendation for Blooming Life Yoga Studio. Um, their request was for $10,000 and the CDC's recommendation was $10,000. So Roger, if you could promote or Wayne promote. Um, yes, I am promoting. Uh, Jeff, maybe. Hey, we're here. We made it. Great. <laughs> Hello. How are you? Good. 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 So Jeff Barfield and my wife, Kristen Barfield. Yes. And we'll have Kristen tell the story of uh, Blooming Life. Yeah. So um, I have been a teacher at Blooming Life since we opened in 2015. Um, teacher got my training there as well. 
Um, a little background of the studio itself. Uh, we mainly, most of our student, students come from Zionsville, um, a few from the surrounding area, um, but we have a really great student base, very supportive student base of the studio. And uh, when the pandemic happened and we had to close, um, it was a real challenge just due to the fact that, um, you know, yoga studios aren't really known for technology, right? <laughs> known for coming in to get away maybe from that stuff but um so we were close for um two or three months and we decided my husband and I to help out before we bought the studio in June um just to see how uh getting live stream started um so the online classes for the studio and we had a great response from the community great response from the teachers that are currently there um and then in June uh we decided to go ahead and buy the studio um, from Lily and Michael Kessler, um, just for the fact that, you know, being a teacher there, um, being with the student base for so long, the thought of closing those doors uh, was really heartbreaking to me. Um, we're such a necessary part of not only physical health, but mental health. And so Jeff and I decided to just go all in and do what we can to keep those doors open, um, to keep people safe at the same time by following our safety protocols. We reopened the studio officially uh, in June, on June 1st. So we have uh, spots open in studio following social distancing and mask protocols, plus the live stream option. Um, so our next step up in order to support our community is to add um, that on-demand uh, technology to give our students another avenue um, to uh, practice their yoga and to you know be with our community. So this business has been a labor of love. We've been we've been physically, um, emotionally, and uh, financially invested and committed to keeping the business open. Um, we've dug deep into our own pop pockets uh, to keep the business open, and we're still committed to it uh, very deeply personally. This business is not making a profit for us right now, uh, but we've made a commitment that we intend to fulfill. But the reality of the monthly expenses um, being more than the income um, is, is starting to become a concern. And so we've estimated approximately six months before we have to start making other plans. Um, we've mentioned we might have to think about closing in six months. We hate that thought. Um, so we like to say we'll make other plans. Um, so we've been operating uh, roughly $1,200 um, uh, below um, uh, profit uh, for the last six months. Um, our average income has been uh, just over 7,000. Um, we had a couple big months in, in September and October um, for some non-recurring revenue that we received, which are uh, surrounding annual memberships and, um, and teacher training. Those are non-recurring monthly expenses. And so when you average that out, uh, we see revenue up. The average revenue prior to us taking over the business was around $15,000 a month. Uh, through 20, uh, 2019, and our average revenues are now around uh, just over 7,000 a month. So it started around five, moved up to six, and we're slowly increasing. Uh, but we feel like we really need to invest in some uh, specific things. First and foremost, uh, having that, um, that comfort level that we have funding in the bank to sustain our monthly operating expenses. But we also have some pretty lofty plans in investing a lot more than $10,000 uh, to grow the business. And so technology upgrades, as, um, as was mentioned, also marketing, um, expanding our teachers and uh, expanding our offerings. And so that's why we are requesting um, the grant of $10,000 to, to give us a head start on some of those things. Great, thank you for that information. Uh, any questions from the RDC? For Jeff or Kristen? I'm, I'm mute, mute. This is Kate. I always have a comment, but that was just a, a great story about the business. Um, love to hear the commitment that you guys have to the studio and to the community. So thank you guys for all you're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Agreed. Thank you. So I entertain a motion to approve the CDC's recommendation for $10,000 for grant for Blooming Life Yoga Studio. I'll make a motion to approve. Motion, a second. Second. Great, thank you. Roger, can you do a roll call, please? Absolutely. Mrs. Swanson? Yes. Mrs. Maverick? 
Yes. Ms. Hiddle? Yes. Mr. Patel? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you both. So Good much. luck. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye bye. Wayne, uh, given that we're approaching the end of our calendar year for the available grant monies, do we have a balance uh, after the CDC's approval of these last two in December? Say between 29 and 31,000, uh, Roger. Okay. If, if I'm off just a, a touch, but that's, it's, I mean, it is, you're right, that we do have a limited opportunity to reappropriate some additional dollars, um, potentially any awards if it exceeds the current dollars, maybe could also be taken out of 21 uh, grant incentive dollars if, if those are indeed budgeted. I know it's, uh, we're still working through those things, but yeah, it's, it's, it's lean as we, as we mentioned last month. Right. Okay, great. Thank you. And do we have any pending that the CDC is considering here in the next upcoming weeks? Roger, I think we're all caught up. Is that correct? We don't, we don't have any yet that are prepared to go forward to the CDC. We have received uh, some additional inquiries within the last couple of weeks. So those could, and the applications do turn around fairly quickly. So those that have uh, just recently inquired, we're anticipating uh, possibly some follow through with them. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, Wayne, can you give us an update on Creekside Corporate lots 10 and 11? Lots 10, 11, I, we did hear very briefly, uh, just uh, the, the chase is ongoing related to that entity. Um, Mr. Christ, is there any additional specifics that, that you have beyond what I just offered? Uh, no other than I don't think um, we've had a chance really to talk uh, since the last meeting. We weren't, um, uh, as, a, as a price of, of kind of throwing our hat in the ring in the bidding, we didn't have to execute a, a binding term sheet. Um, so I think I sent around an email to that effect. But um, so we don't have any contractual obligations with respect to this opportunity. Uh, but we're definitely, you know, we're, 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 we're definitely there to support it. And um, it's just right now they don't they don't particularly need us. So when the time comes, I'm sure that we'll uh, we'll hear more. Great, thank you. And then Wayne, you had mentioned uh, a brief update on the RLL development as well. Yes, we're con we've uh, continued to provide support and information to assist them in, in their pursuit. I know they were certainly targeting uh, a 2020 uh, closing. I uh, certainly do not have any specifics. I know we've, you know, we continue to work with the title company. Uh, in fact, we're awaiting an estimate uh, on what the title costs, uh, title work will uh, cost just so we can be prepared for that but uh, uh, a holding pattern uh, is the I guess the current uh, word at the moment just to get to get closer to closing here in 2020. Will there be any official documents that need to be executed uh, on behalf of the RDC between now and our next meeting that we need to take any motion on to allow myself and Kent to do that. I, I don't know, I don't know what you need from the board for closing. So I just want to make sure that if there are any approvals, we capture those now uh, so we don't have to reconvene. I think from an approval standpoint, um, you need, uh, you'll need to approve uh, the project plans um, and the uh, project financing plan. Um, when those items become available, I would assume that would be one of the last items uh, that RLL would get to us. Um, we've really whittled down the uh, list of documents and issues we need to check off. Um, the title um, is, 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 is a minor issue. We're still waiting for uh, comments to um, the declaratory regime uh, that we're going to record against the, uh, the Creekside lots in order to more efficiently manage uh, Creekside. Um, RLL is uh, is commenting uh, on that document, and uh, uh, but like Wayne said, I mean we're we're in a holding pattern, but we're in a holding pattern because we're really close to the finish line. Okay, great, thank you. 
Any other new business, Wayne or anyone else? I do not have anything. We just uh, have provided the 2021 meeting dates, uh, not proposing a deviation from your fourth Monday at 630. Uh, so if that continues to work for the group, we'll uh, push that on the 2021 calendar. Okay, great. Um, any other business from anyone prior to adjourning? Our next meeting is on Monday, December 28th. Um, Wayne, as that date gets a little closer, let's take a look at if we have any business items to conduct. Otherwise, we may push to January if we don't have anything pressing. Yeah, and certainly it, it could just be the opposite. We might host a, a special meeting um, mid-December just to, if we do need to touch any specific paperwork related to the RLL transaction. But yes, that's uh, certainly will anticipate uh, cancellation of the regular meeting unless there is something on the radar. Okay, great. Well, thank you. Have a happy and safe Thanksgiving all. And uh... you too. Thanks, Sanjay. Take care. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Stay safe, everybody.